Hello Traders, Gary Wagner here. Just about 1140 in Honolulu, 440 in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. December the 9th, 2016 and this is the daily report for gold and silver. We have had this market selling off consistently really since the presidential election was held last month on November the 8th. However, it wasn't until today that the pricing took the markets below what I consider to be a former critical support area when gold broke through 1170 in trading today to close at 1160.90 off about $11.50 or a drawdown of approximately 1%. I believe that this level on a technical basis that the market has traded through could in fact be a signal that lower pricing will continue and the pervasive pressure in the precious metals will continue throughout next week. Silver also closed lower on the day off about nine tenths of a percent below $17 to close at $1,694.50. The low that it traded to was 1685 with a high of 1718. So traders, here we are, roughly one month since the presidential election was held here in the United States. We have a continuing market which has put the precious metals or safe haven plays as a whole under pressure, a strong U.S. dollar, and a runaway equities markets. We can absolutely see the kind of damage that we saw this week in gold, considering that it opened last week roughly at 1181 and closed at the conclusion or today at approximately 1160. We have seen this market decline about $20 this week alone. However, what I believe is most important and most noteworthy, the critical thing we need to look at is the fact that for the first time this year, since the market created its yearly range from a low of call it 1050 to these highs that were achieved in July at about 1370 actually broken below the 61.8 percent retracement it's a critical level that I really believe needed to be held if we were to see any kind of price support come into this market on any kind of a consistent basis to form the base necessary to, to be able to forecast higher pricing. Now, when you consider the fact that back last year, of course, this being November and December of 2015, the market came and, and touched these highs at a pro just under $1,200 per ounce. That's where we began to see the market sell off going in through the end of the year, culminating really at the uh, beginning of December and January right here at these lows before a dramatic price increase or price rise up to this yearly high that we got at 1380. All things being equal and that being said, our next real level of major support uh, really is not going to come into the market until we hit about a 78% retracement. The 78% retracement, of course, is the next logical level to look at in terms of pricing, and that comes in approximately at 1120. So with this in mind, depending on what we see next week, we could easily, easily see continued selling throughout the remainder of calendar year 2016, into and up till the actual inauguration of President-elect Trump, which of course will occur January 20th of next year. Now, depending on what news surfaces during that time, of course, is going to influence whether or not this market continues to drop, but all things being equal, and if fundamentals are basically stay the course, are reacting in the way that they have this previous month, then we could in fact see gold drift to much lower pricing as low as 1180 uh, 1120 excuse me 
So traders, as we looked at gold and saw how that dramatically broke below that 61.8% retracement level, the same cannot be said for silver. Now, both did close lower, both closed off by about a full percent in today's trading. But take a look at this. In silver, when we look at our 61.8% retracement point, comes in roughly at 1652, and the market closed at 16.94 off about 15 cents the other thing that is absolutely noteworthy is that we have not seen the market close below that price point over the last two weeks of course we have noted over this last week the dynamics of the rally that had occurred in silver of course that was up till uh today or this point and you can really see this when we convert this weekly into a daily candlestick chart and so traders, I've done just that. We've converted our weekly to a daily. It's a candlestick chart. And here's what we notice. Of course, we did have this market genuinely trade below uh, the 61.8% retracement of this yearly range uh, that we looked at in gold as well as silver. But over this last week, we have really seen this market move up dynamically uh, trading to just below a 28 day moving average before over the last two days falling significantly but still well above what i consider to be a critical support level now rationale behind it seems quite obvious the industrial component of silver is going to have some a real positive a bullish kick to it based upon the fact that we've got a runaway equities markets so the safe haven plays that are putting precious metals under pressure are not having the same effect on high industrial metals such as silver now Whereas we could see some market declines in silver next week, and if it breaks below, as I said, that critical level, we would have to take another kind of look at it. But I have converted our daily candlestick chart into a Japanese average chart. When I do that, you can really see the uh, market drifting lower. You can see the pivotal candles. You can also see the point in which it bounced off of this. When we look at these, these candles, so the Japanese average are drawn a little bit different. Up until yesterday's candle, we were in a solid bullish mode. And it is today's candle that gave us this doji-like candle, both on a standard candlestick chart as well as a Japanese average chart. So it could be indicating that we will drift lower, have some sort of a dip as we did here. But silver and gold are taking on uh, lives of their own and are certainly acting in a much different manner. Of course, the big news on the upside is the fact that the Dow Jones Industrial Average did in fact close at a new record high today, gaining about 142 points, a gain of three quarters of a percent to close at 17,000, excuse me, 19,756.85. Of course, we have been under the belief that it's not so much if the Dow Jones Industrial Average will climb to, to 20,000, but when. And that when seems to be a lot sooner than we think. We could easily see a 20,000 Dow by the conclusion of 2016. Standard & Poor's also tracking higher on the day, gaining about six tenths of a percent to close at 2259.53. And the NASDAQ also climbing higher today to close up 32 points or a 0.66% gain at 48.94. So traders, we are looking at a weekly chart, standard bar chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let me widen that a little bit so you can see the kind of move that we saw this week. Of course, this last bar represents a week in trading. And in fact, if we uh, kind of stretch that out, you'll see we closed at the highs of today and this week 19,756 what is most interesting to me is really how close we are to having a 20,000 point Dow now just a mere 200 points plus away from that elusive elusive number we could easily see the market trade to that price point by the conclusion of calendar year 2016. 
And so traders, if in fact that is what we see, which is a 20,000 uh, Dow in terms of where that moves to, I believe we could easily see the uh, Standard & Poor's 500, which is now trading at 22.59, easily move to or above 2300 on the standard and pours so i am looking for the standard and pours a uh, two track higher over next week now the dollar continues to rise dramatically again we see the market gaining on the day another half percent 101.59 we know we have some resistance at 102 we know we have support at 100 but should this trend carry over spill over into next week we could easily, easily see the market break above that 102 and move to yet another record high. And so traders, this week culminated with yet a, another stronger dollar. After last week's uh, slight correction in the market, we did point out that we do have on a technical basis some real resistance at approximately 102. You can clearly see that here. You can also clearly see that we have very, very strong support because, of course, uh, resistance areas become support. Support becomes resistance. It simply depends on it is whether or not you're standing on the second floor looking down at your floor or you're on the first floor looking up at your ceiling, that particular structure is the same. It's simply your vantage point. So I believe that now we absolutely have support in the dollar at 100. We have limited resistance at 102. And if it breaks 102, the next point it could go to cannot be ascertained unless we look at some real long-term data. And traders, even by looking at the long-term data, it gets a little tricky trying to find a current level of support or resistance long-term. It's easy to see that 100, this former top here, will become support. There's no doubt about that. But historically speaking, we've got to go back in time because we're at 13-year highs to take a look at various areas and how it reacted. And what we look at are these various peaks as well as the valleys, the, the trough, so to speak, and the next real level, should the market break above 102, which comes in right in here, 102.50, right in here, the next real level would have to be on top this particular uh, trough, so to speak, which comes in roughly at 103, 103 and a half. And those would be our next levels of resistance if we see the market, in fact, break above 102 on the dollar index. So traders, as we close out this first week of December, it has been roughly one month since the presidential elections were held on November the 8th. We certainly have seen some incredible events transpire during this most recent month. Most noteworthy is the fact that we have a genuine optimism that has not been present in the market for too long. The net result of that optimism has been they have moved stocks higher to new record highs. In fact, this week alone, we set multiple new record highs almost on a consecutive daily basis. We're closing out the week with a very, very strong Dow, now trading well over 19,000, just 300 plus points shy of hitting the elusive 20,000 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And had you asked any trader or investor prior, prior to the election held last month, whether or not they thought the Dow Jones Industrial Average would reach, would reach 20,000 by the end of calendar year 2016, I would venture to say that it would be an extremely minute percentage that would have agreed that that was a possibility. Had you asked those same investors the same question immediately following the announcement that Donald Trump was actually elected as our 45th president, that number would have gotten even smaller. I say that because the net knee-jerk reaction last month to the result were the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing or moving down 800 points in futures trading only to recover and move solidly up on the next trading day. It tells us that there has been a real fundamental shift in market sentiment, in consumer sentiment, and that 
the reaction time, more importantly, between getting some kind of news, that initial knee-jerk reaction, and then the reaction we get when calmer minds prevail, so to speak, has really decreased. In fact, we had talked about the fact that when you consider that when the Brexit vote came in, you had three days in which uh, global equity markets sold off before it recovered. When we had the Italian referendum vote, it took mere minutes. And what was in the middle, of course, was the presidential election by Donald Trump, in which Donald Trump won, and that only took about eight hours. The public retail investor, as well as a professional investor, has become much more honed into taking in this information and quickly, quickly making decisions to grow their portfolio. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you, as always, good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.